Hey everyone, this is Dashan Senthil and welcome to this this final post auction review. This time we're gonna be talking about the Rajasthan Royals. I know it's been a really long time and I've really wanted to make it one for these guys, but as they say, last is the best, so <laughs> so here we go. Another best for last. So, yeah, that's what it's it was best for last. So yep. Here we go. So of course, no surprise in the retained list. Shane Watson, of course, he's been impressive for them right from the outset in 2008, where he won Player of the Tournament, and of course, in the recent 2013 league, he won Player of the Tournament for them as well. So he has been brilliant for them right through the outset, and yeah, he's a great player for them. So he's gonna have a little more responsibility with him for him this year, cause he's got he's gonna be captain as well, which is an interesting decision, cause when you see players like Cameron White, who went unsold, who Rajasthan did not really try to buy, and Shane Watson has never actually captained an Australian side before, so the fact that they ignored cap other potential captains such as Cameron White, Mahela Jaywardene, and Tilakaratne Dilshan, of course, it's reasonable that they uh, did not really try to go after the Sri Lankan guys, but like Cameron White and George Bailey, if they could had tried to rope one of those guys in. It would have been interesting, but it's strange that they should go with Shane Watson because, of course, now looking at their squad, it's of course it's pretty reasonable because he's the most experienced. But still, I would have liked to see them pull in someone like Cameron White and make him captain because he's a more experienced lad and would work well with Paddy Upton to form a good uh, to really run the Rajasthan think tank. So either way, Shane Watson as captain, and it's going to be pretty interesting to see how he performs with that extra load on his back as well. Then James Falconer, no surprises there. He was magnificent for them in 2013. He picked up a ton of wickets. He even picked up two five-wicket hauls, both against the Sunrisers Hyderabad. He was pretty good for them even in their CLT20, although he was not quite as impressive, but he was still really good on the list. And of course, who can forget his heroics with the bat for Australia? He scored the fastest ever century for an Australian batsman in ODIs in 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 uh, Bangalore during his tour of uh, during sorry uh, during uh, Australia's tour of India, and also he played some he balls pretty well there as well, and also stuck a crucial. Who can forget his sixty uh, his sixty score in Mahali to help. Australia pull off uh, a jailbreak against India chasing down 300 he smashed Ishan Sharma for 30 in a single over nobody's gonna forget that anytime soon so it was quite an impre that was quite incredible knock from James Falconer so he's really developing into this kind of all-rounder like a second Shane Watson as a lot of people like to call him but he's still gonna need a little more time to develop his batting and he also needs to keep his bowling up at the same time so I'm looking forward to seeing him in this IPL, particularly after he's worked on his batting a little bit, become a little more reliable with the bat. So I'm looking forward to seeing him this year. Sanju Samson becomes the youngest Karorpati in IPL history. He's just about 19 years old, I think, 19, 20 years old. And uh, he was the youngest player also to score a 50 in both IPL and Champions League history as he did that in 2013. He made some really good knocks for the Rajasthan Royals. He was, he won the youngest play, he was the, the star youngest, uh, yeah, the Rising Star Award last year. He was really good for them that there as well. And also in the Champions League final, he made a really good knock of 60 of about 30 odd balls. And he just failed to carry the Rajasthan Royals home. They are actually almost there. They just couldn't get, the, they just lost too many wickets in the end. And it sort of fell apart for them from there. So still, he's a great player. He also did well at the domestic stage. And it's, it's nice that Rajasthan have opted to retain him. Because not many franchises like to put too much faith in uncapped players. But it's really, I think it's a good gesture by Rajasthan Royal to retain, the Royals to retain him. And of course, Ajinkya Rahane, a reliable opener. He's been, he was particularly good in 2012, where he was at the top of the orange cap standings for a good part of the tournament, because before his an untimely drop in form caused him to really succumb a bit, and eventually Chris Gale took, uh, took the top spot. 
So still, he was really he was really impressive. He's been a solid opener for them for a couple of years now. He for the last two years, he's been us. He's played some good knocks for them at the top. He's been a stable batsman for India as well. Particularly that 70 he scored in South Africa was really good. And yep, he's a nice player. He's got good technique, patience, and he's also an excellent fielder. He made some spectacular runouts and catches as well. So he's good. It's, he's a good player for them to have as well. He also provides an opening option and some inspiration in the field. And he's also a long-term option because he's really young as well. I think Kelahane. Next, Stuart Binney. He just made his debut for India recently. He hasn't gotten too many outings to perform both with bat and ball, but for the Rajasthan Royals, he did really good with in the 2013 season. He was pretty good. He was. He answered Dravid's call whenever he was needed with the ball, and with the bat also he made some incredible knocks to to help Rajasthan pull out of some tight situations. So this is a good five that they've retained. I must I must admit I wasn't expecting them to retain players like Sanju Samson or Stuart Binney, but I'm really happy with what they've done here. It's a good five for them to retain. Now let's look at some of the players they've got. Steve Spith. Really interesting buy. Later on, when asked about it, they said that uh, they wanted another prime batsman up there because Brad Hodge is old and, of course, Shane Watson is injury prone. So, having him there provides some amount of stability there, and I think they are right to have Steve Smith there because he's a really good player. They got him at a really good price to just four crores, which is, <coughs> excuse me, a considerably small amount. For someone of Steve Smith's class and the 700,000 I believe it is in USD but he's a great player he's it's really good for them to, to pull him into their squad Brad Hodge of course returns I was expecting them to use the right to match on him to get him but they got him without using it which is really good and at two lakhs at two crores which is really surprising to be honest I expect more I expected more franchises to go after him particularly after his reputation as a brilliant T20 finisher, he can bat really anywhere in the top. But he's a great finisher, like A.B. de Villiers, and as an opener as well, he's really good. He kind of plays the role of A.B. de Villiers, except he's probably not got as much stroke play, and he's not as versatile. But he's really good. He's kind of like the A.B. de Villiers equivalent of the Rajasthan Royals. Excuse me. Next up, Rajat Bhatia. Leaves the Kolkata Knight Riders for Rajasthan. He was he's a good player. He's quite the equivalent of Ashish Reddy of the Sunrisers to my opinion. He's got the slow ball and he's a decent hitter as well. He's a he's not a fast bowler to be honest. He's he's known more for keeping the ball slow and acting like a medium medium pacer. Like a slow medium pacer to be honest. So yeah, so Rajat Bhatia, he's a good buy for Rajasthan. He's got some experience to him as well. He's been playing IPL for the past six years. He's a good player for them to have. And they call him at a really good price, one crore. And if you just look at the way Rajasthan have spent, you'll see that they have not bought too many players above a crore. In fact, Steve Smith is the only guy they've got above like the two crore. Uh, Steve Smith and Brad Hodge are the only guys they've got above the two crore mark. Nobody else they've got above the 2 uh, has exceeded the 2 crore mark and even and they've even got only 5 players out of this vast number that are above the 1 crore mark either and if you look at all these guys are below the 1 crore mark are in la they're in lakhs so i think rajasthan have been really good in their spending as well they've they've not gone too big with their overseas reserves their star reserves and they've taken it, taken it a little bit easier and looked to go more heavy on their domestic spendings which is what Rajasthan have done actually over the last few as a team in general they've looked for breeding young talent and pulling them in and that's what Rajasthan have done in the past and it's worked for them marvelously then of course Tim Saudi a really reliable fast bowler in New Zealand he just made some He's a good. He's a good. He made some good, <laughs> some good spells against India, I suppose. Then uh, they got him at a good price as well, just one crore twenty thou. And he also did play a few IPL games in two thousand and eleven for the Chennai Super Kings. He was a replacement for um. Uh, 
he was a replacement for Ben Hilfenhaus, yes, he was a replacement for Ben Hilfenhaus, and he bowled a couple of good spells for Chennai, but of course, eventually he was sidelined, as <laughs> players like Michael Hussey returned, uh, Michael Hussey and, uh, yeah, those kind of guys returned to the squad, and as Dougie Bollinger, Michael Hussey, as they returned, eventually he was sidelined, so, still a reliable fast bowler for Rajasthan to have at their side, he will do. He, I think he's got a partner with James Falconer well to really lead the Rajasthan attack. So good to see him there. The Wal Kulkarni. He's been. He played for Mumbai Indians since 2000. And he since the first year he's been playing for Mumbai. In 2008 in particular, he was quite an impact player, and he he uses the outswinger in, in my opinion. He uses that ball very well, and he actually it, he got A.B. De Villiers, Virat Kohli and Tilakar Dilshan all out in one innings which tells a lot about this man, how he can bowl really well in a, that was in a Mumbai vs Bangalore game just shows he's a, he's, he's a really good bowler, of course he's been taken for runs at times but he's a really good player with this out and with a little bit of and then you got Abhishek Nair he was this he's this kind of overrated all rounder I feel. He was really good back in two thousand and eight for the Mumbai Indians and even two thousand nine, ten he was okay, but he's kind of lost his touch over the years and despite receiving huge paychecks, like he got uh say about eight hundred thousand from the Kings Eleven Punjab in two thousand eleven, then got another another seven hundred thousand or something from the so not 700,000, another 600,000 odd from the uh, Pune Warriors last year. But he's failed to click again and again. So I think Abhishek Nair is definitely going to have to work on his talent and his or refine his technique and skill to really make an impact again. And of course, no place better to get that than at Rajasthan Royals. So I hope this proves to be a time of learning for Abhishek Nair where he can reform himself and maybe even do well to get into the international stage, possibly. And Kane Richardson, he's a really good fast bowler. He 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 was one of the most expensive players in the 2013 auction. He went to the uh, Pune Warriors for seven hundred thousand dollars, which is the third most expensive for any player after Ajanta Mendes and Glenn Maxwell. So it's nice to see him in Rajasthan. He's a really young player. He's got a nice action. He can extract a lot of pace and it's good to see him here with the Rajasthan Royals and he's gonna really do well under players like Tim Saudi and James he can assist Tim Saudi and James Falconer he'll do really good with them then Ben Cutting the Australian all-rounder he's a good bowler but he's also a really hard hitter he made 42 of 25 balls against the Chennai Super Kings for the Brisbane Heat in last year's Champions League it was a good knock and he saved his team from a lot of embarrassment. So, yep, he's a good player. I doubt he'll get too many opportunities, but he's still a good player for Rajasthan to have. Then Karun Nair, he was he played for RCB last year, got two games, but he failed to do well in either of them. But he's he's still a really good batsman. He can score runs. He did well for Karnataka and the Ranji Trophy. And I think it's Rahul Dravid who it's Rahul Dravid's influence that got him into Rajasthan. And I must say I'm excited for him. I'm looking forward to seeing him do well here. And then uh, Unmuk Chand. Everybody knows about him. Under-19 captain. Victory, etc, etc. Good hitter. I'm looking forward to seeing him in Rajasthan. He's, he's probably going to open the same role as he did for Delhi last year. Except he's going to really be working with players like Rahul Dravid. And he'll do well in this front, I feel. Unmuk Chand. Iqbal Abdullah, he won Rising Star of the Year in 2011. He was really good as a spinner for them back then. And now he's he's still been one of, he was still one of Kolkata's mainstay spinners for the last two years. But his quality sort of was not as good as it was in 2011. So he was not bad, but not extraordinary either. So it'll be nice to see him work in Rajasthan Royals. And maybe if he does well enough, he can even, who knows, make it to the international front. Particularly seeing how players like Ravi Chandran Ashwin are getting criticized for their for his not being able to be a wick, overly wicket taking and stuff so who knows <laughs> Deep Deepak Huda another uncapped player good bowler he made quite a mark recently he's got him for 40 crore 
440 lakh. It's not a bad play. He's pretty expensive for an uncapped player, but still not bad at all. 40 lakh. It's not too bad. Then. Actually, wait, 40 lakh is not too expensive. Yeah, sorry, slip of the tongue. Then Dishan Tiagnik will return to their squad. He was wiki keeper last year. He took some. played some good knocks for them. And even he's remembered for particularly carving Dale Steen for a couple of boundaries in the last over to give of a match in 2012 between Rajasthan and Deccan Chargers to give his team a, a close win. It was a really close game, that one. Then Kevin Cooper. The, he returns to Rajasthan as well, his West Indies seamer. He was, he's really good for them, a good death, bo death overs bowler. He's also a keen hitter and a really attack, a he's a good quick as well. So it's nice to see Kevin Cooper back in the squad. And Vikram Jeet Malik also made a mark for them last year. Both some good spells, both in the last phase of the IPL and in the Champions League as well. So it's nice to see him there. Ankit Sharma, okay, he was a left arm spinner for the Deccan Chargers slash Sunrise or Hyderabad. And uh, he was good in 2012, but he did not get too many opportunities in 2013. So, but it's nice, but he's nice to, it'll be nice to see him come to Rajasthan. He was a reliable, he was a pretty good spinner. He opened the bowling for the Deccan Chargers on a few occasions and was very successful. Then you've got some more uncapped players until you get it Praveen Tambe who's also uncapped but still he's who can forget his show in the Champions League 2013 he bowled with an economy of around 4 and just could not stop taking wickets he was just like incredible he was so good and he just failed to win them the league he was really good in the final as well when all his teammates were going at in the nine and the in nines and tens per over, he was somewhere around three point two five. But he was incredible with the ball, Praveen Tambe, and hopefully he will carry his Champions League form into his IPL, the IPL as well. So now that we've talked about their eleven enough, let's put uh, into their about their players enough. Let's put them into uh, in eleven. So my guess is that uh, Rahane is going to open, of course. And he's probably going to open with, <coughs> I'm not sure, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, he's probably going to open with Chand, it's an option for them. Then Shane Watson uh, can play at 3. And something I noticed about Rajasthan last year was how they were, how flexible they were with Shane Watson. One match he would open, then he could bat at 3, he would bat at 4, even bat at 6, 7. Excuse me. So I noticed they were very flexible with Shane Watson. So th again, none of these squad, none of this is fixed. They can move it around a lot. I'm just giving an idea of how it might look. And then Samson. He also batted at three quite a few times. So, but he's just gonna we're just gonna keep him at four for now. He's gonna also gonna be keeper, I think. And then number five, I think we will have Brad Hodge. Then at six we'll have Smith, Steve Smith. Number seven we shall have Binny. He's gonna come in at seven there. And then number eight I think they're gonna slot in Faulkner. Then Bhatti at nine. Probably. Mm, um, and then, uh, let's see. Uh, they've used. Uh, I think they've one, two, three, four. So the overseas cap is done. So they can't put in any more overseas players. Then uh, let's see. Probably Iqbal Abdullah. I'm just going to put Iki uh, in the KKR duo. And then probably they need yeah Vikramjit Malik probably. So overall this is a nice bowling lineup I feel. Shane Watson can bowl, James Falconer can bowl, Stuart Binney can bowl, Lajrajat Pare, and then of course 
you have four bowlers then Stuart Binney and Shane Watson can add in with the extra fourth spell if needed and even Brad Hodge and Steve Smith can toss up some spin if they need to as well so overall the Rajasthan have got a fairly balanced squad of course I was expecting them to go for a, some more different players more players who had dynamic batting positions like Glenn Maxwell and George Bailey and Cameron White would have been players who would have done well for Rajasthan as well but I'm impressed by their squad selection nonetheless especially their uncapped their young player quota I'm really impressed by that so this is what I feel they might use of course they can swap this around if they want a more spinning track they would probably put in Ankit Sharma for Bhatia if they wanted more spin or they could if they wanted some more fast bowling they could put in like someone like Amit, this Amit Mishra not the leg spinner but the fast bowler and maybe put in Kevin Cooper instead of someone like Steve Smith that they needed to and of course they've got plenty of options backups as well they've got backup players here and they've got uh, and they can even play, play Dawal Kulkarni instead of Malik if they want to they can they've got plenty of options I feel so yep that brings us to the end of this podcast and the end of this post auction preview, review series so we're gonna, I'm not going to be doing any of these till next year's auction of course and yep it's been a play thanks for sticking with me for all this time and I hope you enjoyed this one as much as you if you enjoyed the others please do check out the other ones as well you can follow them just by looking at this channel or by visiting my website iplgeek.com if you search around a bit there you should find it and of course do stop by my website at iplgeek.com you can they've got some nice stuff over there some interesting some interesting posts you can watch live streams as well if you'd like and yeah overall it's a nice site if you are a cricket fan I've got a lot of information there particularly about the IPL because IPL is my favorite thing to write about also please do subscribe to my channel it would really go a long way it just makes me feel good on the inside of course I'm not I don't work for money this is just purely recreational and it just makes me feel all warm on the inside so please do subscribe leave me a nice comment on what you liked about my work or maybe some constructive feedback and yep I really appreciate you all for watching and 